Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is a new episode of the Future Hour, and now is the introduction for today's podcast. And today we have the guest of my dear friend Julian Alexander, and he is a philosopher, a thinker, an artist, a businessman, and my dear dear friend. And he really believes that as long as you or I really think it through, really practice and sharpening our thinking, and in this way it help us better think it through the consequences and actions of our behaviors, and hence we can really set ourselves onto this life path that you are going after your goal and you're getting closer to your goal by the day. And he's a dear friend of mine. We actually met through our mutual friend Alex. Met Alex in Australia, and then one year later, when I first moved to California near Los Angeles area, Alex put me in touch with Julian, and we had such a good time in California. We went on adventures, we went on traveling, we go to the beach, and we done so many things. And now, after four years later, we finally been together in the same room again and record this beautiful episode of podcast for you. So check it out. We talk about leadership and many, many more other things. And he is such a precise. Thinker and a logical one. So hope you all enjoy this podcast as much as we did, and stay tuned till next time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a day! We're so so excited. Another episode of the Future Hour, and today I'm so lucky to be here with my dear dear friend Julian Prof that we have not seen each other maybe for like. Three years or so, three and a half years. Three and a half years, I think. More, yeah. Ever since San Diego, ever since California, and、uh... yeah, I mean, at that time, like four years ago, I I, I still was in San Diego. So、yeah. the first time we met was probably around four years ago. Yes. And yes. I left in September. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we spent. So、uh... it's more. It's even more closer to four years.、Probably. Exactly. And it's we... crazy. Yeah, and spend spend that beautiful summer together and. Also, at the same time, for those who you don't know us, let us tell you a little bit the origin, and especially the origin story of Julian. And tell us a little bit what you are doing in San Diego, what you are studying. Year abroad for my studies and、um, my bachelor's degree, which I was、um, trying to finish in <laughs> Frankfurt.、Um, so I, I I did everything before that, and then I still had to like this mandatory. A semester abroad, basically, and then I could change. I could choose where I wanted to go, and I thought, like, why not go to California?、Mm. And in the end, I, that's why I went to California.、Um, because I, so the first thought, why why would I go to California, was because I I was doing powerlifting. I just started this kind of sport, and I was super interested in it, like weightlifting, getting stronger, and、mm-hmm. doing everything like that. Yeah. And then I I thought like California is the place to be if you wanna get to know people that do CrossFit and do powerlifting and、right. do weightlifting and that are getting stronger. And、yeah. so I that was the only choice for me. I had to go <laughs> to California. Yeah. And then I went to San Diego. Right. And the funny thing is, how did we met? I know. I know. Um, my a friend of mine from my studies. He we've been in the same class. He just had his. Semester abroad、um, a year earlier than I did,、um, yeah. and you met Alex. Yeah. <laughs>、um, in Australia,、right. <laughs> a year before、yeah. I went to America, and then you got you got to know each other. You got、right. great friends. How、yeah. I think and yeah, yeah, yeah. and then.、Uh, I a year after I went to America to San Diego, and then you were hitting me up, being like, "Oh,、yeah. Julian, you are the the nice close friend to Alex.、Yeah. Why not just、yeah. just hang out? I'm just、yeah. moved to LA, and then、yeah. everything started from that on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. From that moment on, yeah. And I remember many of the days and nights we would just go out and we take a camera, we go to the beach and take photos, we just meet people and taking photos inside everywhere. Literally, we take photos everywhere. And, yeah.、Uh, I'm、uh, meeting people like everywhere <laughs> we go, and as it was absolutely just incredible, incredible experience.、Um, <laughs> so, share with us like something you could be inside the classroom or could be outside the classroom, like something you learned and carry it on with you from your experience in、uh, America that you think that will be quite、um, interesting and important that's worth sharing here.、Mm-hmm. I, I have like two takeaways, like、yes. that are pretty、yes. big.、Um, yes. 
one takeaway was that um America, a lot of people, um, and I didn't expect that because I'm not just not used to it from like the right. culture that I'm living here in Germany yeah. and Europe, um, is that people are aware, pretty open. Yeah. Um, and they are very interested in people that come from different nations. Right. Um, because it's for an American, it's very hard to get to Europe. And when you're right. living in Europe, it's very easy to visit <laughs> like Spain, France, Italy, Denmark, whatever you want. Yeah. Just so close and you can visit much more different cultures and in america it's way harder to really get to know different cu right. cultures that's how i explained to myself like the people were super open and it seemed like they were very interested in the culture i'm i'm bringing with myself and everything like that and the other thing was that that's just a personal thing um to trust people more because some there were some situations like buying a car basically for my That's own money right. doing right. doing stuff like that and um i had certain plans that i wanted to do there so i definitely needed a car in, in america <laughs> yeah um like five and, days in lake tahoe huh yes for example yeah. yeah and i i was super lucky i just i got a perfect car for like cheap amount of money and it worked as it should for the amount of money yeah and the guy who sold it to me he had like a um like cars dealership for like um pre-owned oh. cars oh, okay. and i i just went there by accident so i was oh. um it was on my second day in san diego i just went around the neighborhood and okay. i and i thought like oh dude you gotta look for cars and then i went to hertz and to like right. bigger companies yeah, yeah 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 and like those cars were super expensive like yeah, five thousand yeah, dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. even more for, and I didn't want to whatever car pay still. it. Yeah yeah, 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 sure. I didn't yeah. want to pay it. And then I was just yeah. walking along. Yeah. And before, and this is where like two stories now now intertwine intertwine each yeah, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew before I went to San Diego, right. I was searching for a powerlifting gym that I am going to go to. Mm -hmm. And as my walking around, exploring the area, right, I just crossed the street and i noticed the street name was convoy street i was like you know that name because oh there was a gym that i was looking into uh, getting a membership which is called convoy strength uh, and then exactly that was the street where the gym was that i actually wanted to have my membership uh, in san diego so and then on the other side of the street there was a car dealership so i had so i found my gym and i yeah, found yeah, my yeah, first yeah, car yeah, at yeah. the same place actually yeah, yeah. And then I went into the car dealership, so, said to him, like, yeah, I have 2,000 euros, something more. Um, you got something, and he got something. So I bought a Pontiac G6, yeah. and, um, and it was a totally fine car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, if, and also on that day, I first, it was my first visit to the gym. So I had, ah. like, two things at once, yeah. just by accident. So two bird, one stone, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, sure. It was one of your first days in San It was in sec Diego. my second day in San Diego. Wow, and then, wow, wow, and then wow. Three days later, I bought a car and then I had a car like after yeah. like four or five days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And my gym also. So I, yeah. every, I got everything I wanted just in the already in the first week of being wow. there. This might be something that will recur quite a few times throughout the podcast, which is the having trust when you are doing things, when you are taking a risk, when you are let's say whether studying abroad or you know like trust your intuition on a career choice or taking a risk somehow go travel to somewhere that you don't know that many people yeah right for for exactly. example like this time now we're recording this um podcast actually in germany as my first time in germany came here for my birthday mm -hmm. and it's absolutely incredible every single day i'm being blown away not only spending time with a dear friend but also exploring to see the culture and everything all yeah. that it's just absolutely incredible i'm talking about all the things that you've been doing and you've been working on the past few years. Mm -hmm. So just generally super curious about how you think about leadership and ethical and moral, because I know that when this is actually what you're uh, written on, on your thesis. Yeah, maybe. this is my master's thesis. Um, so I studied philosophy and economics as my bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about, Oh, what do I do, do, I do next? And, um, the usual way today is to study management, and so I had a so I did a master's in management. Right. Um, but when it came to writing my master's thesis, which in my opinion is supposed to be something that like connecting everything together, kind of 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah Connecting yeah, yeah. all the things that I've learned throughout my studies until that point and sharpening that rough information that I got and then like really stepping into it, what really interests me. Yeah. So in my, at my master's, I thought, okay, what, what should I do? And I also wanted to write a nice master's thesis. I first thought about what does really interest me and um, how should I put everything together? And then my idea was to write about leadership and organizational design, because I yeah. think it's such a huge topic today. Um, a lot of the traditional st structures, how companies, organizations are built up, e everything's going to change from now on. That's, yeah. that's how I think. Like the yeah. new generation, yeah. we bring change with us and we need change. As we see, the, the world yeah. cannot go like this even further. We have to change things because of like climate yeah. change, yeah, yeah, yeah. culture, technology, people, technology, blockchain. people want more freedom. Yes. People want to be We're more working. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And yeah, we want to, we want to, we want to create a nice world. So leadership is the first thing because leaders create our world. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah leaders yeah, create yeah. organizations, leader create, leaders create states and they try to, in, in an ideal way, leaders try to make the best out of it for everybody. Mm -hmm. So everybody is better. Yeah. It's like everybody is winning. Not only the leader or this like CEO win, not only the shareholder wins, but ideally everybody within the company and the customers and the clients all win all the stakeholders and exactly exactly yeah. right not only shareholders also the stakeholders exactly <laughs> um and that was the first thing that i wrote about in my master's thesis i was like what does it mean to be ethical and what does it mean to decide in an ethical way in a company so i tried to right. figure out what does it mean and then at first i had the discussion about stakeholders versus shareholder value mm. And I, in my opinion, I found out that stakeholder value is the thing that we should go for. Yeah. Because it just brings benefit to more people. Right. Yeah. Because stakeholders are not only the guys that own the company, it's like the people that work in there. It's the people that live around it. It's the people that, um, the community, the community you know, yeah. that cooperate with the organization and so on and so on and so on. So it's just. It's just more people that right. are getting what they yeah. need and deserve. Yeah. yeah? yeah so yeah. that's my thing. And um, what I was writing and then I was, what is actually ethical decision making? Right. This is um, the scene from um, Odysseus, yes. basically uh, the book from Homer. And he, Odysseus was like a Greek guy who he, he fought at Troy and then he had to get back to his family in Greece, obviously. Right. So he had like his man on the ship. And what they did, they went back with the ship from Troy to Greece yeah. and he faced some challenges on his and, way and, back. And, tempt and temptation is a big, is, well. is a big one. And, and he shows, in my opinion, the story of Homer, uh, like the story that Homer was writing about Odysseus just summarizes what leadership is in a very good way. And so yes. there was this one challenge that he faced. And it was that um, they were going through the Strait of Messina. Um, and as it said, the story, there are sirens in the water. This, mm. These are like, like creatures, half human, half fish, or in this picture, just very nice women for that time. <laughs> um, and they were, they were going past them. And it said that these sirens, they are singing so nice that no man can... Yeah, can with withstand the temptation. Yes, yes. So they are going to jump in the water, right? And the ship is going to crash against um, the cliffs. Yeah. And these sirens, they are going to eat the man, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so the thing, like, what's leadership here? Odysseus knew about right. knew about it. Yeah. So he knew that if we're going to meet those creatures. There's no way that we can ever resist the temptation. Mm -hmm. So, but he knew it before that. Obviously, yeah. oh, no, everybody knows that if there is a certain situation coming, I wouldn't be able to resist it. And but he wants to bring his men home, so he had yeah. to do one thing, and which was to. So he pre see that challenge, and he committed himself that no matter what happens, instead of the system, that no matter what happened, I'm not going to let myself jump into the water. So he literally tied himself. 
right to the mast of the ship yeah. so he was yeah. he would never be able to jump into the water yeah, yeah and then what he did he um he took wax and like sealed the ears of his sailors yeah so they wouldn't just they would never hear the sounds yeah. of the sirens yeah and it would just keep rowing and going yeah. past them yeah and this is called a constitutional commitment which means that sometimes we are able to foresee some situations where we know that it's very hard to resist the temptation and be, in order to yeah. restrain our own behavior right. we have to do certain stuff right there's this other idea like try to make a diet yeah go on a diet yeah. with a full f refrigerator it's yeah. impossible yeah so yeah, 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 just yeah. <laughs> take everything out of the refrigerator yeah. and then go on no diet cookies and, and sugar it's in, way a, in a pantry yeah exactly and that's he did the same thing yeah and this is leadership leadership there's no leadership without responsibility and this is what the story says yes and there's no leadership without responsibility i just say it again because it's I it's, think it's very important. It's, it's very very important and profound at the same yeah. time, right? And I think this is also leading to another thing we talked about the other day, that in in this case, a leadership is someone that is leading the direction of the company, right? And when it comes to another type of relationship, for example, romantic relationship, and a man or a woman, he or she could also be the leader of this ship called a relationship, right? And that requires responsibility and commitment as well, right? Could you comment on that when it comes to um, leadership in a romantic relationship? And what are something that the audience, you know, the younger version of ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. um, they would like to learn the secrets or tips so that they can um make better decision coming into the next romantic relationship they're encountering it's always the same yeah the, so yeah. first of all leadership is always the same it right. does depend on what kind of organization you are i mean yeah. you could technically say that a relationship is also a kind of organization or institutional however you want to call it right because you're in a team yeah. it's just that that's a small team it's just two people and in an organization, it's maybe five people, right. 10 people, yeah. 20, 50, 500, 5,000, 500,000 people. Yeah. What I think about re uh, relationships is that you, you like in every organization, you need a goal to strive yeah. for. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Odysseus' goal was to get back to their families. So, like, so you always have a goal and then you, right. and with that goal in mind, you try to figure out your actions. For him, it's yeah. easy. It's just, Drive the boat. To get home, drive right? the boat. Get and yeah. to to my hometown, basically. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So the worst <laughs> thing is to jump into the water and let yeah. the boat crash. So <laughs> just not do that. So it's yeah. very easy to find a plan of actions for yeah. you. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in a relationship, you have to set up a certain goal, a certain vision, and you should together work for it. Yeah. So you're pulling on the same string together. Yeah. In yeah. the end, you. I mean, everybody has its own interests and this is what relationships are about. You have to find com compromise about those interests yeah. and then to find a goal together. What you want to, maybe do you want to create a family? Do you want to have yeah. kids? Do you yeah. want to live on an island later on? I don't know what it is. And you just... Should... And it's different for each relationship. Absolutely, sure, right? Definitely. Yeah. But you need that goal yeah. because then you can always say, dude, we are in a team. So we cooperate we are not we are not doing the opposite we, are, yeah. we have to cooperate yeah and we have to find an alignment and then try to strive for that goal together and this yeah. is the same in a company the leader's job is to align all the interests and that they achieve their goals right right yeah 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 and this is always the challenge i mean we are in a globalized world there are different interests out there and the challenge is always to find Find the common ground. Find the alignment and, for, and for the people alignment. from all the world, right? People from... Yeah. Um, especially nowadays, more and more, within the last few years, more and more people working remotely, right? Let's say, I mentioned to you this company, like 50 people, all of them, maybe all of them are in different countries. How do they or how do we align all these people, their personal like goal with the company goal? Mm -hmm. And th that's something very interesting, right? That's, so Yeah, that's the biggest that's that's i think that's where we are today yeah i think like the traditional view is that 
um, I give my work and I get money for it. The, the company has its goals and maybe there are some, some interests aligned, but not really all of them. And I think ideally um, you have the same goal as the company you're working in. Yeah. I- One comment on the goal when it comes to in a relationship, a romantic relationship, should people start setting goal already even when they just start dating this person? Like the very beginning stage? There are different, I think there are different challenges, but I think the sooner you've got a common goal, the better it is, right? And, and the common goal ideally should be like one party have a conversation with the other one and be like, this is what we are going to do versus it's not like you are thinking you are on your own, be like, oh, this is what we're going to do without communicating with her or him. You have that, to that's very important, and right? find the common ground. It would be like, this is where we are going. Now, like, this is, I think, where we're going. Yeah. And, and that, the difference there is probably so many fights and so many breakups. Yeah. Right? Yes, exactly. Because sometimes you expect something, um, but you're not talking about it. And the yeah. other person is expecting something. Yeah. And she or he yeah. is not talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, Why people then as that? you talk, you find out that, oh, man, I do have very different expectations yeah. than my partner has. So is that even going to work out? Are we even able to align those? And I think mm, there's very, very much as possible. Yeah. But if like the expectations are very, very far away from each other, it's even harder to align those. Yes. And that's a challenge. So you first have to find out what are your expectations, what are your own goals, and then yeah. you have to be able to communicate about it. And this is something that everybody... The most people have to learn. I had to learn it myself. It took me long, but I don't know what's long, what's not long. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people when they are fifty, they still break up, and they th- yeah. and then they had like different expectations. So maybe they've never learned it. I don't know. And this is this is the challenge to first find out what are my goals, what do I need, what do I want out of this relationship, and then and then be able to talk freely and open and have tolerance and acceptance with your partner yeah yeah and giving and receiving if the younger version of myself get into a relationship right now i think i would tell him that a good goal to have it would be finding your partner in crime not only you two can like go out and eat and do explore travel do all those exciting things together but also at the same time that someone that you are willing to build this bond that you can share many many things that Maybe you are what we're not willing to necessarily talk to other people about, but we can talk to her or your partner about. And I think that's a pretty goal to have. And that is already requires quite amount of openness from your end and from her end as and well. Communication skills as yes, well. well yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's definitely a good goal to have, no? Mm-hmm. Like, keep in mind. And also, um, like, um, a good partner is somebody that helps you learn about yourself in my opinion, yes. that you can, yes. by communicating with each other, that you find out about yourself and you find more things about yourself. Yes. So that's yes. also the good thing about having a partner and being alone. You have like a sparing partner mm-hmm, that always mm-hmm. shows you, dude, that's not good. That's good. And you get like direct feedback from somebody who loves you, accepts you, but they also have the freedom to constructively criticize you. Basically. Absolutely. There, there will it's, be tough love when they, when it's needed, and 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 you should expect tough love. Yeah, you know. Oh, the fun fact: this. <laughs> Except if you are the perfect person, oh, you wouldn't accept tough love. But who exactly, is? <laughs> exactly. Hey, and then let, let's shift the topic to something a little bit more chill, more vibey, right? Um, mm-hmm. could you tell us a little bit about <laughs> just two things? You know, I mentioned um, after you before, but I want to uh, hear some more insights. Tell us something about uh, the Frankfurt sausage and the apple wine in the neighborhood. A little bit, a little bit. Like your take, if you have, I don't know, like a childhood story about them or this and that, you know, could be everything or anything. Um, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I was studying them on my way here to like Frankfurt area and I was like, get the expert. Let I'm from them. the area, so, so yeah. I should be, I should have some information about it. That's ru- <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, apple wine, it's like, it's like some sort of cider. Yeah. But yeah. it's actually sour and not not sweet. It's a totally different kind of apple than than the the other than even the American or Spanish cider, right? Or the French cider. Yeah, I think cider yeah. is. Oh man, I think I think I'm not sure, but I think cider is originally from France. Could be. 
and then but we have our own version of it yeah. basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah um yeah. so the area where i'm from we have a lot of um like the rhine area basically yeah and so we have certain kinds of mountains they're like they're grapes are growing their way very well and also right. other fruits yes. like apples for example apples, no? so people used to make wine out of grapes and apples sure and mm -hmm. so and we have our own kind of apple wine okay and it's like like i said it's pretty sour so you yeah. you press the apples and then you just um let it um um you just let it go on does this thing no yeah 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 uh, you know it was also you, know, you let it ferment that's what that was the word that i'm searching for you just let it ferment actually also you know in a barrel yeah in, okay. in a barrel okay, yeah okay. And like there's air coming out and stuff like that. And has to be certain temperatures, so it could be kind of cold and. It has to be actually. You know? It has to be warm. Is it okay? Because fermentation goes better, the more, really? the hotter it is actually. Yeah, because really? the bacteria they they are just going. I've been to some vineyard. They're kind of cold. They're kind of chilly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Like um, what? Well, maybe maybe that's... like somewhere in Spain that is like maybe outside thirty five degrees and inside is twenty. Well, I mean that's still warm. Yeah, it is That's warm. Pretty warm. Yeah, right. It's yeah, yeah, still yeah, warm. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. I'm not saying 30 degrees. I mean, 20 <laughs> degree, 20 degrees is pretty good. There's, I mean, there's a temperature that's too low for fermentation. I don't yeah. know what it actually is. Then you should uh, ask my girlfriend because she's she studies that. Oh uh, yeah, she yeah, studies. I mean, she does life science life and science, no? um, cellular biology and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Bacteria. So she also and... studied that the bacteria, the fermentation process. She knows. Yeah, that, so she know? knows that's yeah, also yeah, yeah. part of yeah. her. Um, thing yeah. we're gonna we're gonna link her comments here in the show notes yeah. so that so that we have scientific you know uh, insight for you all and, and uh, yeah <laughs> and i mean just long story short apple yeah. wine is a regional thing here it's not that everybody in germany drinks that it's just yeah, around yeah. the rhine mine area that's yeah. where i'm from like yeah. frankfurt and um yeah it's great Try yeah. it out. It's yeah. uh, um, yeah. every it mean everybody has their own taste. So there are like two kinds to drink it. I mean, like three. You can drink it just the apple wine. Okay. Or you mix it with sparkling water. Ah. Or you mix it with Sprite. <laughs> so then you have like a, a sweet and like a sour version. In Spain, it. we have something similar, huh? something like called a tinto de verano, which is called a summer wine. And then they have they will have wine with spark sparkling water or or Sprite in it. But it, is it white wine? But red wine. Red wine. Oh really? Red wine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never had that yeah, before. Yeah, super good. I should get uh, it. Super probably. good. Super yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something to drink in the, in mm -hmm. the summer because it's just like mellow and chill and. Yeah. Uh, and then you asked me about like Frankfurt sausage. Frankfurt sausage. Um, like the word because they're freaking delicious. They're freaking delicious. Like the word suggests, Frankfurt sausage are yeah. from Frankfurt. Um, it's like it was like historically. Making sausage is a, just a kind of preserving meat. Mm -hmm. Preserving energy that uh, is extremely important for civilization de to develop. Yeah. For people to just like kind of buy this and eat it later. You know, it doesn't have to be yeah. like you eat it right now, so, otherwise it go bad. So it doesn't go like bad as fast. Yeah. Wait, did they have refrigerator at the time? No. That's, I think they are... that's a big thing. That's yeah, a sure. huge thing. I think refrigerators right? were like got being common in like the 60s or yeah. 50s yeah 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 and this was maybe i don't know this was even this like, was like 100 years before more than 100 you know? years yeah frankly that was a huge deal at that time the we, we briefly mentioned that the way they could process the meat and could be preserved um way longer than that period and also in such a manner that it still takes good and was a huge deal yeah and also like making sausage you can actually use a lot of a lot different parts of a pig for example right so you can put things in there that aren't that nice but if you like put them with herbs and spices yeah. and then you preserve yeah. it it actually starts to taste pretty good and yeah. it's like and also for the people that were like really hard working so the frankfurt area is like an a, a industrial area that's right and we even had like um mm. a part in frankfurt where they were like um I think they were trading like coal and wood and stuff like that and certain uh -huh. kind of stones and stuff. Right. And so they, um, and then we also had an industrial area there. So the people need to have like a lot of calories every day if they work so hard. And yes. so, yes. and sausage is the best way. It's fatty, you got meat, it's protein. People had huge problems with getting enough protein in right. the middle ages yes and making sausage is a good way to give people more protein right yeah and it yeah, doesn't yeah, get yeah. bad as yeah. well yeah 
And that's how the Frankfurt sausage eventually evolved in Frankfurt. It's made out of pig yeah. meat yeah. and then with certain spices. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, I think they smoke it. Um, it tastes like yeah, it and tastes, then, tastes like that. Yeah. And a fun fact, um, uh, I think the v- the Vienna sauce is very famous, but apparently it was the same dude that who was originally from Frankfurt and and then he made the sauce super popular in Frankfurt. And then he went to Vienna and he kind of like had this like two point thing, which is exactly the same sausage, but um, the original came from Frankfurt. Yeah, the, <laughs> I think the process is exactly the same. Yeah, but what I've heard is that. And I'm quite confused right now, but there there are Vienna sausages made out of veal, like baby cow, we you talk, know? We talked about that yeah. the other day, yeah. And so I am not sure, but there's also Vienna schnitzel, mm-hmm. like Wiener schnitzel in German. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's also made out of veal. Veal. And then there's normal schnitzel, which is made out of pig. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, but I don't know yeah, quite yeah. for sure, yeah. that Vienna... They had they just had veal there, so they made also try to they call it a different name. Then they preserved it, and then they made sausages out of them, and then you had like, um, <laughs> yeah, Vienna sausage yeah. made out of yeah. veal as yeah. well. Yeah, and also the schnitzel made out of made out of veal. That veal. that's this brand you mentioned, like eleventh generation, right? The, the yeah, that's a, Do they have veal sausage? They put pig and veal in it. Okay. They, so they together it, in yeah. one. It's like a new company from the area and they yeah, make yeah. their own sausages. They are It's one of the best. According it's to your, one of it's your opinion. currently one of the best brands yeah. for sausages, definitely, because they um they just put good stuff in there. It's quality. You don't get like the bad meat stuff. It's very quality. They put so much work in it. It's, and um I think it's a good thing. Yeah. And yeah. Apparently, the animals are also feeling well while they are living. And <laughs> good, good. That's that. That's important. That's quite yeah. important, you know. So um, I like it. And they are a little bit more expensive, but if you want to eat something good, you should also be willing to pay a little bit more. Right? Yes. That's yes. how I see it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. So if you're around the area and you're in a supermarket and you have a barbecue, get eleventh generation sausages. Awesome. sausages. Also, there's no, um, there's this, this is no advertisement or anything. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. know the guys. <laughs> uh, I just like curious what's going on yeah. and what what the future holds. Yeah, yeah. And what, also, what your podcast holds. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, definitely. absolutely. Want to, from asking these questions, having conversations with my friends, to, hopefully, come across a bit about the way we are thinking, the way we're viewing the world, mm-hmm. and because we have. Obviously, we don't have all the answers, right? But we have made plenty of mis- mistakes and we have done plenty of trial and error to be able to sharpen our thinking, to sharpen our uh, idea of the world. And we really hope that that will be beneficial for the listeners out there. Yeah, sure. Right? Um, because, for example, the mistakes that we have made when it comes to leadership, when it comes to relationship or whatnot, um, if you listen to this podcast and if you could be like, we are about to make a decision, you could be thinking, oh, I heard this from somewhere, then you make the better decision and then that will be super helpful because that might save you six months, three days, three years or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And- That's why I'm reading books because they're like people writing down some of their experiences and then you don't have to... You can learn out of their out yeah. of their faults without yeah. doing them yourself, right? Yeah. And also, another like I think like general thing is, the earlier you make certain mistakes, the better it is because the consequences aren't that high as exactly, if you are older. Exactly. 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 So, when you are older, you are like your kids gotta go to college, your wife, you know, your second kids coming, all that kind of stuff, and obviously you don't want ne- you don't necessarily want to let's just start a company then. You want to do it now when you are, you know, when you are yeah. have super healthy and have like more time on your hands, right? So yeah, definitely. So that actually leads to the final last question, and which I think you're gonna love them. You're gonna uh, have them tomorrow, right? For example, right? Uh, and you only have one piece of paper, you know, something that you accumulate the biggest two lesson that you could write on this piece of paper that you could leave onto the world. What would those two bullet points be? I think we already told. I already told them. Yeah. Um. There's no leadership without responsibility right and if you're going to make mistakes make them early yes that's what yeah I mean. that's I, i've good. learned those things and so I, I i'm i can definitely say those 
yeah yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. what i'm going to give wow give wow. out yeah the gold nuggets you know absolutely yeah beautiful um julian's legacy <laughs> um so what is one book that you can think about out of your head right now that is, is that is one of your favorite because we got plenty of options here yeah sure I was reading the How to Become a CEO yesterday. It's a very simple short book. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but would, that's it. It's just simple and short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love them or lose them. I think that's an interesting title. Um, I really, I, I personally really like Zero to One. I recommend everybody to read it. Oh, yes, them. sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Um, I think... Oh, man, it's hard. I, that's very hard, the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I... <laughs> Also, there's like for me, there's like different kinds of categories for books. Yes, yes. So right now, I'm just right now I'm in like a rabbit hole because I I've been reading Friedrich Nietzsche quite a lot lately. Yeah. Also, I started with it for my master's thesis because he right. tells us a lot about like society, how it changed. N- 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 Nietzsche, the, Nietzsche. The, the, the Nietzsche, the guy who said the, God is dead. God is dead. The, the, the German. He's a German philosopher. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yes. yeah. Um, yeah. he's. I know our boy Jordan Peterson also quite. Uh, yes. I love to talk about him. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely the boy. And then um, Friedrich Nietzsche's favorite writer from Germany is yes. Heinrich Heine. Heard of him? What um, book he wrote? Uh, he wrote more like he was more like a public writer for like um, newspapers and stuff like okay, that. He had, okay. uh, but he did also write like essays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. That's why, so I st- I was reading, oh, the pronunciation, Ecce Homo from Nietzsche. Then he, in that book, he mentions Heinrich Heine because he says this is one of the, his favorite uh, romantic writers ah. um, from Germany. So I love romantic literature, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I started reading Heinrich Heine. And then yeah. Heinrich Heine, he was writing about the Middle Ages, how Christianity was shaping our belief systems, like yeah. with one God, every, we have like one individual ideal goal. Ideal. Every, to, everybody should be like that. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, like we have 10 commandments, you have to follow those, and then you're making God happy, and then you're coming going to heaven, basically. Yeah. Um, the thing with that is that in the Middle Ages, we had a huge problem, which is that everything that is man-made was pretty bad and everything that's spiritual is ideal and so so like everything man-made as i said is bad so it actually makes your life pretty bad if you think like oh i want to do this and want to do that but you already (laughs) always know this is not what god wanted me to do and this makes your life sort of miserable and very average yeah um it, I mean, it helps some people because if they just have a shitty life, yeah, they have hope. They still have hope. They have the worst life and they know if I die, it's not over going to heaven, which is a, a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't solve all the problems we have. Yes. Um, and especially throughout the time changes. And then that those kind of like rule hopes are just being reviewed more and more when it comes to math and physics and all the other technology being revealed into the public. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and every culture has, like, solves problems, and every culture also brings its own problems with it. So there's no ideal thing, in my opinion. Yes. There's just a certain time, and yes. then you need the right structure that solves the problems that are the worst at the moment. Yeah. Right? Yes. So if, like, the biggest problem is climate change, because it's an actual topic right now, yeah, like, yeah, everybody yeah, talks yeah. about it then it's you have to question what kind of culture solves that problem the best right if you yeah. want to solve it that's it that's again like i having i'm having a general goal and i want to solve it so yeah. i have to find the ideal way to get yeah. to my goal right what do you think is the biggest problem for oh, it sounds so funny what do you think is the biggest problem for our generation um <laughs> getting out of those old structures like the traditional structures um and just leaving just leaving the old world as it was and then creating a new one and this is also the thing that Friedrich Nietzsche said with the quote that God is dead because after stopping to believe in God you you, you need to have something new yeah you, know, you, you have lose, a, a new, yes, new system you, otherwise 
Yeah, people you, don't believe anything, and people go crazy, and people go. And you need a new tips, you need a new system, yeah. and it's our challenge to create a new one. And then he says, basically, don't we have to become gods ourselves to be able to face this challenge? And the thought is that every human is has a godly part in him because yeah. you can. Absolutely. Make order out of chaos. This exactly. is also the thing that Friedrich, uh, that John Peterson, Jordan says, Peterson yeah. talks about, right? This yeah. is like the godly spark that everybody has. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, you can. We have the intelligence. We have the creativity chaos. to yeah. to be able to make things happen. And even even though things seems like incredibly hard, or even quote unquote impossible, or never been done before. Yeah, people like Alexander the Great or something like that. They had like huge visions, and yeah, like yeah. two thousand more years ago, yeah, they just yeah, yeah, yeah. went from Greece to India and they conquered the whole world. Yeah. And they just did it in a lifetime, like fifteen years, and then he died. Yeah, which is crazy. I yeah. mean, this is like yeah. he built the, the biggest empire on earth in yeah. like fifteen years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's possible if you really believe in it. Yeah, I mean. I I totally see that there's something godly in him. I, I'm not saying that everything he did was right and it's the right way to conquer other countries and stuff like that. But <clears throat> just the just the fact what he did, I mean, that's the same thing with certain companies today. When the leadership is in place and that almost almost somewhat guarantee or is a pretty safe to say for this organization is have higher chance for them to accomplish great things. When the leadership's in, they're in place, right? When there's way less meeting, there's way less bullshit, there's way less, um, I d uh, what's that thing called, um, corruption, or that kind of thing. It just make the system more efficient. Yeah. Produce more outcome. Yeah, and for better outcomes everybody. for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. I would say, Julian, thank you so much for this time and conversation. And, and yeah, thank you as well. Originally, you know, we briefly mentioned originally just want to be a free flow conversation, and, and however, I think relationship, leadership, and this society. and society and this curiosity about wandering, reading books, traveling has always been our topic in our lives, and yeah, most likely, and maybe every single person among our uh, this generation. Potentially, right? And uh, I, I just found this fascinating. I just found it fascinating because yeah. we we could be talking about whatever we're talking about, like culture and traveling, the sausage and what the wine, but it always leads back to this these few things. Yeah, always you always get back to the same point you're starting off with, like yeah. uh, common interests, yeah. being free, yeah. doing something better than yeah. it was before, yeah. and uh, yeah. creating something new. Yeah, I mean. That's the thing. I, I, that's also like the spiritual thought that everything is connected. It is sort of. I do right? think so. I do think so. Yeah. I do think so. Really, otherwise, otherwise, um, the story you have at the beginning of the podcast, the the car with the gym, you know, um, me with the stories happening in Berlin and all that, and life is just incredible. So, um, yeah, we. Hope we dearly hope that you really enjoyed this podcast as much as us enjoy recording it. Um, some insight for leadership, some insight for relationship, some insight for the awesome sausage and apple wine here in this area. And uh, <laughs> shout out to our dear friend Julian. You know, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank and, you for uh, having me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm excited. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. We gotta keep doing. We gotta keep doing more episodes and. Uh, I'm super stoked. I'm yeah, super stoked. and I hope you're having me another time. Yeah, absolutely. Brother. <laughs> absolutely, brother. We're out here, G. We're yeah, out all here. the best. We're out here, G. <laughs> yeah, brother. I like them so much, so please sponsor me. At the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please, yeah. Yes, sponsor a podcast, <laughs> you know, so we have all the uh, nice sausages. And Do you guys have barbecue here? Um, yeah, we do.